Automation here in GarageBand iOS only allows you to automate volume, or does it? Because in this video, I'm going to show you some tips, tricks, hacks, and workarounds to level up your automation game in GarageBand iOS. Let's go. Let's start with the basics. How do we use automation in GarageBand? Well, to do this, we tap on the icon here of the track and then on automation, and you'll see we have these automation lanes here. If we solo this guitar, let's say we wanted to automate the end of this one. We wanted to take the volume from where it is down to zero. Well, first of all, we have to slide this button here in the top left corner, and now we can add automation points. Let's use our fingers to zoom in on the end of this waveform, and let's just say we wanted to tap here, and then fade out to here. So we put our two points in there. We now turn off by sliding in the top left again. We can now grab this point and bring it down. So we'll grab this and drag it down to zero dB or to minus infinity dB. And then if we play this last bit of the guitar sound, you'll hear that it's gonna fade out. Very cool. So you can use your volume automation to move your volume up and down in different sections, to fade in, fade out, and even remove breaths from your vocals. I've showed that in other videos that you can find linked down below. But what if we wanted to use automation to automate other things? Well, let's dive into that now. Let's now look at automating panning. Yes, we can do panning automation, but it takes a bit of trickery here. Let's solo this lead guitar track. We want to duplicate it first by tapping here on the icon, hitting the duplicate button. And the next thing we want to do is select all of these and the way we do that is by tapping outside here and then we can actually tap and hold and drag a box all the way over all four of those and then tap on them tap again and hit copy we now want to paste these onto this track so make sure that your playheads there at the start tap on this track tap again and hit paste we can now solo this second track and you're saying so what pete now we just have double the volume what good does that do well here's where the magic comes we can use automation on these tracks as long as as well as panning to actually create a cool effect here so we'll grab the first track here We'll tap on this one up here, which is your plugins and effects here. We'll grab the panning and pull this all the way over to the left, like so. We'll then grab this one, do the same thing. Tap on that panning and drag it all the way to the right. And now we've got two, one on the left and one on the right. Again, this isn't going to do much until we do our next step, which is the automation. Before we do that, let's just listen to this guitar track as it stands right now. Pretty cool, but it's right down the middle, yeah, because we've got one on the left, one on the right. What we can do, though, is use our automation on here. So again, we're going to tap right here on this first one, tap again, and then tap on the automation. This time it's hidden over here. If you ever get that problem, you can just tap on the little arrow and you'll come across. We'll flick on our little light at the top there, and now we're going to add automation. So let's add an automation point here at the start. Let's add another automation point here in the middle and then another one at the end. You're probably ahead of me here with what we're going to do because we're now going to do the exact same thing on this second track. Now, you can get it perfect if you want to spend the time, but you know, rough and ready is kind of fun too sometimes. Let's flick off in the top left corner and now what we're going to do is grab this one, drag it all the way down and then grab this one over here and drag that all the way down and then grab this one and drag that all the way down. What have we done here now apart from create pretty patterns? Well, what this is going to do is this first track is going to start at full volume, go down to zero volume, and back to full volume. This track is gonna start at zero volume, go up to full volume, and back to zero volume. And remember, this is panned left, and this is panned right. So check out what happens when we play this. If you're listening in stereo, you're gonna get something cool. How cool is that? And you can probably already start thinking of ways that you can use this stereo automation of panning in your tracks, creating some cool stereo effects. What about automating effects? Well, there's another workaround we can use for that. You know that cool effect where we get a delay on the last word, or maybe you want some effects to sort of come in and then back out. You want to automate those. Well, there's another way to do it. And yes, it does require another hack. We're going to do what we did before. We're going to duplicate out this time this audio track, this vocal track, and then we'll just copy. We only need this first passage for this one. So we're just going to copy this and we're going to tap it, 
tap again, hit the copy button. Make sure that again, our playhead is right there at the right spot there. Go to our next track we've just created and paste it in. So once again, if we solo that, we've got two copies of this track, which is really just gonna double the volume. But what I'm actually going to do is turn this second track into an effects only track that we can then automate. To do that, what we're going to do is come in here to the plugins and EQ, and we're gonna edit these. Now, I'm just gonna remove this EQ plugin. I don't need that one, it wasn't being used anyway. And we're gonna actually add in here an echo plugin. So we're gonna use the track echo plugin here. The cool thing about this is, you can see here we have these wet and dry. Now, this method works with any plugin where you can turn the dry all the way down to zero, and you can turn the wet all the way up to 100 because what this is now going to do is this is only the delay. So this is only the quarter note delay that we have on here. So if we just play this track, you don't have to lift a finger. You can hear that it's just the delay part of that. If we bring in the original track here, you'll hear the difference. Work, they, work, don't, they don't have, don't to, have lift to lift a finger. finger. So how is this powerful? Well, what we can do now is if we only want, say, that last gur, that last sound there to have the automation, to have that delay on there, we can do that with automation. Let's show you that now. So we'll take the effects track here, we'll tap again, and once again, we're gonna go to automation to do this. This time, we're gonna, once again, turn on our little automation thing at the top there, and we're gonna line it up here so that this very last syllable is what we're focused in on. So we'll tap there, we'll tap there, and we're just gonna tap all the way at the front here as well, just so that we can lower things down. So a couple of taps there and we're good to go. What we're now gonna do is turn that off and then you can actually, as well as the points, you can grab these shelves and you can actually pull this down. So if we tap on a line, we can actually drag the line all the way down like that. Now we don't want it to do it like this, do we? We want that to go straight up. So we're gonna have to tap over here and bring this one across just to the right spot there. And the same with this one, tap on it and drag it gently across like that. If it does that duck down thing, just bring it back a little bit and there you go. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna give us the delay, but only on that last word. Let's uh, take a look at this and you'll see how it works. So this track is playing at full volume. This has zero volume until that last little syllable and you get the cool effect with the delay on the very last word. Than me, they don't have to work. They don't have to lift a finger. finger. Did that work? No, because it got the whole finger. Yeah, so what do we do? Well, we just adjust it, and you can play around with this and get it to just the right point, so you're only getting that last little delay bit. Let's try it with this. Finger. 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 Still too much of it. So again, you just keep playing around with it, and because this is the delay, you do have to move it a little bit later than what you think you would, because it's doing that quarter second, that quarter note delay that's actually delaying it. Finger. Finger. Not bad, getting pretty close. And if we do one more little test here, I reckon just a little bit further across here, like so. And uh, I think this is gonna sound pretty cool. Finger, finger. Still a bit of that thing there, so we'd have to play around with it. But yeah, if you start messing with this and playing around with this, you can use this for delay, you can use it for reverb, you can use it for any effect, your flanger on your guitar, you wanna bring that distortion in for a guitar solo, like you're kicking on a distortion pedal, you can do all of that with this effects automation. The final automation option I wanna show you is for your keyboard sound. So I've selected this one, this is an alchemy synth patch called the Bell String Pad, and uh, it sounds like this. Pretty cool. And you may not be aware of this, but we can actually use a function called the Merge Recordings to record in effects over the top of this. Let's show you how. We're gonna tap on the little mixer icon here, and under your track settings, we have this one, the recording options, and see this Merge Recordings? With that off, what happens is if you record, it records straight over whatever you've got there, but if you turn Merge Recordings on, it's actually gonna allow you to record and add to this. So for instance, if I just hit record now, I can actually add another note. And you can see there that it's actually added those in. If I play it back. So it's a really cool feature, even if you just want to get some sort of harmonies on your keyboard sounds. But it can do so much more than that because it can also help you automate if you want to change your sound. So you may be aware that here in Alchemy, you can use these knobs and dials to set your sound. So if we say play this back, we move this. 
And as we move around this grid, all of these knobs change. Now you can also just change the knobs themselves. And you can dial in your sound. But what if you want this to do a bit of a sweeping kind of sound here? Well, that's where our merge recordings function comes in. Let's hit record and move this pad around and create something a bit cool. There you go, quite the performance right now. If we play this back, we're gonna go look ma no hands and uh, take a look at what happens. Yes, all those changes are recorded in. It'll record in your knob movements. Broke his knob in half. Your dials, you can use it with any of these, with your XY pads. And this works for a surprisingly large amount of instruments, your pitch and your modulation bends, a whole bunch of cool stuff in here. So if you want to create a cool, unique sound and you want to do some filter sweeps and some cool things within your synths and your other keyboard sounds, that's how you do it. So there you have it. We've got panning automation, we've got effects automation, and we've got automating the effects on our keyboard keyboard sound. So just when you thought that volume automation was the only thing available in GarageBand, now you know you've got a whole bunch more tools in your toolkit. If you want even more tools in your toolkit, check out the videos linked down in the description down below, and I'll see you next time.